All right, I just make the show go longer and longer because I can't stand to be without you guys, Warriors and Cavaliers here. Uh, feels like just yesterday these two teams were matching up in the NBA Finals, uh, doesn't it? Here you got the Warriors on the road here. They're a slight underdog right now to the Cavaliers, a one-and-a-half-point favorite, maybe because of this road trip uh, a little bit, it feels like. Right, so this one goes off at six Eastern and three Pacific. Clay is questionable for this one, and uh, we have seen Jared Allen. I thought we we saw him return right uh, to action, which that's the biggest news certainly for uh, the Cavaliers here, who've been kind of uh, without him early on this uh, early on here for a few games this season. So, yeah, it is t- looking tough, tougher to move the ball in that uh, KC game, doesn't it? Warriors money line here for Fernando. Mike says Warriors could win the tourney, and I think Mike means the tourney. How would you guys like that? Did We didn't even get a chance to talk about it too much, but, uh, uh, right. I will pre- I'll predict this. The team, look at this one. Brent has the Cavs to rock the Warriors here today. Yeah, uh, I, I do feel like there could be some. I think the Warriors are kind of coming up there. I, I think they're blaming a little bit of their stuff on Jordan Poole. And I don't know, maybe he is a you know, a guy you don't want on your team. I don't know that much about it. But it looks like they're kind of trying to portray themselves as a, you know, and, and they're still Golden State. They'll still be fine. I do think they're going to have a lot of um, – problems possibly on the road here i know the sharps are going to be on cleveland i don't necessarily trust them uh here in this spot but uh i guess that probably would be the lean actually the why the reported steam did come in on the under that's uh probably the way i'm gonna go again gonna go on the under i'll probably be on the under every game i just trust the move here when you see like a move like that on all the games across the board to a certain extent, uh, that is more of, of an indication of the uh, bookmakers saying, hey, you know what, we might have just put these lines up a little bit too high. Uh, the money, you know, the early money is coming in, you know, here, let's make this adjustment. So this one's down to, uh, I better just update it, right? Because this, uh, this is very misleading. I feel like one of those guys that, uh, you know, uh, changes the line on, you know, after you've already made the pick and say, well, hey, it's not your fault. I'll go under 220 here or nothing I can do. Um, it was as high as uh, – I saw as high as 228. So I don't know how comfortable I can be in this one or how comfortable you could be in this one. Uh, it does feel like, uh, you know, in a game that's going to be played in the mid, mid-two-teens to me. So it's lost a lot of value here. And I'll take the under – Ray's going against me here. Interesting, Mike. You sound like one of those. Uh, I'm not. You're the statistics man, so I'm not. I'm teasing here, but uh, on some of those shows I've been, you know, they're like big conspiracy guys. Like, hey, when these two teams play on the same day, and I love these guys, but <laughs> all right. But uh, there also could be, you know, one thing. One thing that definitely I, I I do would would subscribe to is that sometimes the money lines on some of the bigger you know like six seven eight point spreads feel a little jacked up. It might not be the bookmakers necessarily opening them that way. It could be a fact that uh, betters like to tie their NFL plays to big NBA money lines or some NBA money lines that are maybe two or three dollars um, in a standalone game or a late game. 